If you've been following the discussion on trimming between Avid Mini Composer and Final Cut Pro 10, you've probably seen the video from Wes Plate as well as the one from Austin Flack illustrating why Avid's dynamic trimming is superior to that of Final Cut 10. There's been a lot of discussion about the tr trimming in Final Cut 10 and how it can do some of the same stuff that MIDI Composer can do. And to a certain degree, it can do some very basic things, but I wanted to kind of expand upon the video that West and Austin made and show you uh, more detail as to why I think the Avid dynamic trimming is far superior to that of uh, Final Cut Pro 10. Making this comparison is a little bit apples to oranges because the trimming tools are quite different as you dig into how many different ways you can trim in MIDI Composer. For example, we have the Smart Tool here, and the Smart Tool has many different modes and it can be turned on and off, where if I click and drag around in the timeline, I'm not selecting any clips or doing any kind of trimming. But with parts of the Smart Tool turned on, I can now click and drag clips to move them around, or I can click and drag and edit to make a trim. Now if we go over to Final Cut 10, we have different types of trimming tools. Some of those are available just by leaving the default selection tool alive or active, or we can go into the more detailed trim tools to get some more de detailed kinds of trimming. So in a sense, Final Cut 10 has its own little smart tool, if you will, by using the actual trim tool. But I think for the sake of discussion here, we're going to leave our um, selection tool active to, to begin with. What I have here are two very similar timelines that have some simple clips that help illustrate some of these uh, trimming techniques. They are just numbered clips that have time code countdowns in them. They're starting at some very specific points. There's you know, 10 seconds on the time code there. This starts at frame 100, 10 seconds there. And back in Final Cut 10, I've got pretty much the same thing set up here in Final Cut 10 as, as well. Now, to illustrate the basics of dynamic trimming, what I want to do is just select this edit point in MIDI Composer, and I can go into trim mode by clicking the trim mode button there in the interface or just hitting U on my keyboard. And now I go into trim mode, and by default, I am seeing both sides of that trim. I am seeing the outgoing clip number two and the ingoing clip number three. And if I wanted to roll that trim, it's just a matter of hitting L on the keyboard and you can see the trim is now playing forward and we're seeing both sides of the edit play in real time as well as see this little playhead that moves along as we make the trim. In my mind that's one of the most powerful things of the dynamic trimming of MIDI Composer. I can see both sides of the trim play at the same time and I can see visual feedback in the timeline as the, as the blue playhead doesn't move but the little trim playhead moves. I've hit J and I'm playing backwards and you can see that that trim is being played back and I can see exactly how that trim is being played back in the timeline in addition to actually seeing both sides of the trim itself playing in the composer window. Now there is a preference that can be turned on and off. And if I go to my trim tool, I can turn off the um, dual image play. And with that, I've only seen one side of the trim play, the, the side of the trim in which I am actually uh, hovering my mouse. And that can be handy um, on slower performance machines, but it's just nice to have an option to be able to um, turn that type of thing on and off, which is a nice thing about Meeting Composer. In trimming, there's lots of different options. So that's first and foremost a very nice way of dynamic trimming. But beyond that, and something Wes talked about is, I can actually JKL scrub. So if I hit J twice, and three times, I'm getting triple back speed, triple playback as I um, trim backwards. I can hit L three times, and I'm getting triple speed as I play forward. And that JKL scrubbing just allows me to rock the trim back and forth. As you can see with the little, the little playhead there, as I move, as I JKL scrub, it's just moving back and forth at different speeds. So that's a very, very visual way of seeing your trim feedback, both in the timeline as well as in the actual composer window. Because I'm watching both sides of that trim play back. Back in Final Cut Pro 10, this type of dynamic rolling of the trim itself is just not possible. In my selection mode, I can select the trim but there's no option for me to actually play that trim back in JKL scrubbing and actually make the actual 
trim edit happen. Yes, I can nudge with my period and my comma keys. I can actually hold those down and get a little bit of uh, sort of movement back and forth, but that's certainly not the same thing as doing basic JKL scrubbing. I can go to my trim tool and then I can click and drag the the uh, edit and do a, um, a rolling trim, which is which is pretty easy, but it's still, there is no way to actually play that trim back. As the other video with Wes and talked about, yes, you can actually use your trim start and trim end tools and you can play around the edit and actually make those trims, but that is not the same thing as being able to dynamically play the trim itself, get feedback as far as seeing both sides of the trim as well as seeing the trim happen in the timeline. Now there's been talk of the precision editor of, being, of you being able to actually see both sides of the um, trim as well and you can if you actually skim the clip itself which is what I'm doing here and you can see that as I play beyond the edit point I can see my outgoing clip and I can actually see my incoming clip but what I'm not seeing is both sides of the edit play back at the same time and I'm also not seeing any way to actually dynamically play that trim play the edit out back and forth I can click and drag it yes to make that that uh, rolling trim but I'm st there's still no way to dynamically play the edit itself as well as get feedback and see both sides of the trim at the same time. Digging a bit deeper, let's see a few more operations here and how they compare using the dynamic trimming in Avid versus Final Cut 10. I'm going to turn on my keyboard overlays for some of these sections just so you can see what I'm pushing to achieve some of these trims. And my keyboard has been mapped a bit differently from the default of Avid. So those keyboard strokes may be a bit different than the default. In this case, I want to, um, let's say I want to take this edit here and I want to roll the trim in but leave a gap behind on this clip number two. That's pretty easy to do. I am in my um, overwrite trim mode in MIDI Composer and I'm just going to um, go into trim mode and then click the left side to get the, uh, the trim to happen on the left side of the, of the edit here. And I'm just going to hit J and watch that play back. And when I let up, I'm seeing this playback, and when I hit K to stop the playback, I've now trimmed that shot and left a gap behind. Now that's also achievable in Final Cut Pro 10 on a relatively similar kind of way. I could go to my position tool, I could then play back, and then hit the uh, trim from the end point, and I've done basically that same thing. I've sort of left a gap behind and shortened that clip. That's kind of the same thing and achieved in somewhat similar way. And again, in Final Cut 10, as I hit the JK to play back, I can double time it. I can see my playback, hit option bracket or right bracket, and that will trim it to the playhead and leave the gap behind. So that's kind of a similar way to achieve the same thing. Now, if I wanted to close that gap up in a dynamic trimming kind of way, in MIDI Composer, it's just a matter of into uh, my dual roller trim mode. Then I can just JKL, scrub that all the way out till it closes up the trim. Done. In Final Cut 10, the closest I found to do something similar to that would be to go into the Precision Editor and then place my cursor over the outgoing clip and hit play. And I can now watch that and play that back out and then do an extend edit as I get to the end of the edit itself. Again, it kind of achieved the same thing, but not in near as elegant or as fast a way as I was able to do it with the dynamic trimming in MIDI Composer. For this next trim, I want to take this Halo clip that has audio attached to it and uh, do a ripple trim and trim some of that clip away. Now in MIDI Composer, I'm going to turn on both my Smart Tool Ripple Trim and Overwrite Trim. And when I go into Trim Mode, I'm going to do it by clicking uh, the button in the interface this time, I can go to my Red Overwrite Trim by clicking on the top part of the timeline and the Yellow Ripple Trim by clicking on the bottom part of the timeline. So it's just an option to be able to access both of them sort of at, at one time without having to change uh, to turn parts of the tool on and off. But now if I want to just ripple trim this in and take away you know part of this halo clip it's just a matter of hitting J and rolling the clip backwards and I can see my 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 um, outgoing clip moving I can see the trim uh, happening and the audio's been trimmed out as well. If I wanted to then extend that out I just hit um, L 
And again, that's all going to extend back out. If I wanted to then flip over and trim the other side of the edit, I could then just click on this side and then I'll start to see the ripple trim perform on the, uh, this next clip to the right as well. That's how easy you can make some of those and how quickly you can make some of those trims with the dynamic trimming. Now I have the audio here. If I decide I wanted to only trim the audio and not the video, just a matter of turning off the video and my, my trim roller is now only on my audio, I could then just click the middle and get back to my double roller trim and just trim that audio out all the way to the end of the sequence. And all this happens while I'm seeing the video play back as well as hearing the audio, which is just just a drone. Back in Final Cut 10, I haven't found anything near that easy for something as simple as extending out the piece of audio. In this case, here's my Halo clip with the audio. I can expand my uh, audio video, and of course I can click and drag that out all I want, but you can always drag the trims in Final Cut Pro 10, but that's kind of defeating the purpose of this, this dynamic trimming discussion because when you're clicking and dragging, you're not playing back everything in context. And that's what the dynamic trimming comes down to. The fact that in Media Composer, that playback of the trimming, it keeps all that stuff in context as you're watching the video and audio actually play back and seeing the video and audio play back. Now what I have found is if I expand the components and I select that, that, that uh, clip right there, I could hit play, let this edit play, and even though I can't hear the audio anymore, I could hit Shift X and extend that edit. But if I've, I've hit ex extend edit one time, now if I hit it again, for some reason it doesn't extend it anymore, which seems like a bug more than anything. But I haven't found anything that lets me do those audio trims quite as well as I do that in MIDI Composer. I could go ahead and um, detach my audio and do it that way. But when I hit play, when I'm past the audio, I can't hear it anymore. In this case, by detaching, I can still extend, but I can't actually hear it anymore. And I could, of course, do a um, sort of play around, but every time my playhead leaves the audio, I can no longer hear the audio anymore. Whereas in Media Composer, by doing the dynamic trimming, I can still hear the audio as I actually make the trim. I'll end this with just a quick little uh, demonstration of another thing that I think is really nice about the dynamic trimming. In this case, if I wanted to just sort of create a split edit here with this piece of audio starting before my cut to the video, just a quick matter of turning off a video track, entering trim mode, and then just rolling the clip backwards. I could hit the space bar to play that back. I don't like the audio cutting on, so while still in trim mode, I can just hit my add transition button. I'm gonna add a 24 frame dissolve, zero frames before the cut, hit okay, hit playback again. And now it's playing around this particular edit and I can just go ahead and, and um, dynamically play that back out and preview that cut. Now, you can see what I have here is a two second um, pre-roll on there. If I don't like the two second pre-roll in this case where I'm having to work around this edit for quite a while and two seconds is too long, I can just go up here into my composer which is changed to show me my trim mode. In this case, I'm getting feedback that I moved this edit 44 frames and I can just actually change my pre-roll to um, say six frames. So I'm not waiting so long to make that pre-roll. Again, just more quickly, uh, dynamically changing the trim. I can just roll that back. And then with a long post roll here, in this second's two minutes and uh, 30 seconds, I could just sit back, watch my edit while in trim mode and make sure uh, it's like I like it. And then when I'm done, exit trim mode and I made the edit. Again, Many of these things can be achieved in Final Cut 10. In fact, everything pretty much can. It's just a matter of how you go about it. And in my opinion, and some of us who's been discussing this, the dynamic way in which Media Composer lets you do some of this stuff is a better option of doing trimming.